Good afternoon. It is um, Wednesday, and this is a meeting of the Conservation Commission Subcommittee on uh, Conservation Land Policies Rules. We have present commissioners Michelle Lobb, Bruce Stedman, and a special guest Stephanie Scarillo, and uh, Wetlands Administrator Aaron. Uh, Jacques, and I forgot to say that Stephanie is Director of Sustainability for the Town of Amherst. So today we're going to uh, talk about community gardens, and if there are any members of the public, I would ask that they make themselves known so that uh, we'll have time for public comment. So we're going to begin with an overview and a little back uh, background with, from Aaron. And then I think Stephanie is going to talk to us about the models that are in use, a little bit about history, and see where we go from there. Okay. So um, Stephanie, um, Angela, Dave Zomek, and I met uh, last week, and we basically took a look at the draft um, community garden rules and regulations that Alex had um, given us in draft form, I believe, in early December. Um, and we basically went through that relative to the existing policy documents we had um, on uh, Amethyst Brook and also on um, Fort River Farm. And so there was a couple just very minor changes. Um, the first being that um, they've mostly designated that the sort of registration fee for community gardens, they would rather refer to it as a donation. Um, so that's a very simple change to the to the language in the rules and regulations. Um, the other sort of changes were that um, as we talk about the um, the names and locations of the conservation areas that um, it's important for us to understand that the Amethyst Brook uh, Community Gardens and the Fort River Community Gardens are very different. And anybody who's been out to either of the two sites knows that. Um, but the, the Amethyst Brook um, Conservation Area Community Gardens are very sort of um, uh, independent, shall we say, uh, independent functioning. Um, and that the Fort River Community Garden set up is a uh, an organized collaborative that has come together to um, set up their own sort of rules and regulations, community-based rules and regulations for use of the garden. So I don't wanna get too much into detail of that, but that's kind of the distinction between the two gardens and how we want to break that out in terms of um, providing links to applications for each of the gardens is probably gonna be the distinction um, between the two um, whether somebody applies to be in Amethyst Brook or to be in um, the Fort River um, Community Garden. So with that, I'll let um, Stephanie kind of talk more about the collaborative and how that was formed and um, any thoughts she thinks are pertinent to share relative to that so the commission can kind of understand how it functions. Yeah, thanks so much, Erin. And I can give a little more background about the differences in the applications as well. Um, Dave's going to be joining us briefly, uh, shortly. Um, so I will say that from the beginning, so I, I want to actually first say that I've been with the in the conservation department for about 27 years now. So I've, I've only been in this department and I've worked with um, various you know, um, a various evolution of the gardens over time. I've seen when I first started, we used to have several um, for various reasons because of staff management um, constraints. We ended up greatly reducing the number of gardens we had. And we're sort of, if you sort of want to look at it this way, we're kind of starting again. And so when we were looking at purchasing the Fort River Farm parcel, there are, as you are all well aware, there are a lot of resource areas on that site. So we were seeing this as an agricultural demonstration project where we could demonstrate having community gardens in a space adjacent to resource areas where it was done in a, you know, sort of respectful of the resource areas, if you will, um, and had, you know, certain constraints upon it 
based on its location. So for instance, um, using only organics and not going beyond the fence limit of the actual garden area. And sort of those are the more sort of general constraints of what were imposed on that site. Um, but the idea was that it was an agricultural demonstration project um, that was going to be located near um, residential housing so that we were near housing complexes. So in this case, um, you know, we have a housing complex that's pretty much just right down the street from this particular garden. And so um, Colonial Village, I'm sorry, is the is the complex. So we wanted to make sure that we had something that was on a bus route um, that was accessible. And we partnered with the Collaborative for Educational Services to help us get community engagement and, and get people to get more actively engaged in gardening. I will say historically, our gardens were often um, accessed by people with vehicles. So this is probably the first time that I've been with the town that I've actually seen people walk to come to garden at the gardens. Sometimes they bike, you know, they'll use their bicycle, but most of our gardens in the past were only accessible by by vehicle. So the idea of this was really to make it something that was more accessible. And um, the guidance was that in working with a collaborative that we did have to have it be a more sort of equitable, equitable access to gardening and that we catered to BIPOC populations um, that historically are underrepresented in these situations. So that was that's the funding that they had in order to partner with us. So some of that was a little bit imposed on our collaboration with um, Healthy Hampshire getting involved in helping to set up the gardens. So it's a very distinct, different model than anything else we've ever done in the town. And the idea was to empower community members to come in and have oversight over management of the garden itself. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything that happens there, but in terms of how people gardened, where people gardened within the garden space. Um, and we allowed them to have the ability to develop some of their rules that were under the guidance of our kind of general format. So we knew that we wouldn't be, you know, people would not be allowed to use pesticides, for instance, that were not organic or any kind of, um, you know, introduce other structures or things that didn't, cons weren't consistent with what the Conservation Commission had identified in their land use policy. So they had the ability to sort of be more focused on just the management of the people in the garden and how they operate, when they operate. Um, and how they set up, like they have work days and they have things like that, that they, they've established as a group. So there's a, a very core group of people that work. And I am part of that group to maintain consistency with ensuring that what they do is, uh, within the, the larger frame of what the conservation commission has identified in their land use policies. That's kind of the, the general about the Fort river farm community garden. Amethyst Brook pretty much operates the way it's historically managed. Our our gardens have historically been managed, which is, you know, they're very independent. People come and go and they have some staff uh, connection with, in this case, Angela Mills is the one who, um, you know, sets out the timeline with the gardeners and collects the donations and has contact and collaboration and is the liaison for the for the town for that garden. So again, Fort River Farm is a very distinctly different model than anything that we've ever done before. That's the historic background. Any questions, commissioners? Michelle? I don't thanks Stephanie. That's really interesting. Um I don't have a question specifically about what Stephanie said, but I have a question for Stephanie about community gardens in general. So we can address that later, but just, just I don't want to move on. Okay. Um, so we, we've been talking about places that may be suitable for community gardens or agriculture. And I was just interested in your long-term perspective about um, like 
areas that have been historically used as community gardens or agriculture, or we have now that you think would be a good fit, like that you have your eye on or would work? Um, I like that the walking and biking accessibility, that seems to be really great. Um, and we were talking about Podic, but that's definitely like a car access only kind of thing. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you had any like sites in 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 your site that look like they would be a good fit for community gardens and or agriculture. Um, well, agriculture, I'm going to take that out of the equation because that's like a whole other set of <laughs> restraints. And um, but me specifically, no, I mean, we do these things as a department. Um, and certainly in collaboration with the CONCOM. So in terms of uh, looking at sites, the only real next kind of potential site that we've identified is at Hickory Ridge. Um, so mostly it's, um, you know, I, I really think, although some of them are accessible by vehicle and others are accessible by public transportation, I think that's good. You know, I think we want to have a variety that suits different people's needs. Um, I think, you know, it's a lot of it is proximity people, um, you know, people who can get to some of the gardens by vehicle that might be closer to where they live and that's more accessible to them. So that's what they prefer. Others, you know, if it's accessible by public transportation, then people are certainly welcome um, to come to those as well. But I don't think it's a priority and a, not necessarily, I shouldn't say not a priority, but not a defining characteristic of whether we choose a site or not. I mean, mostly I think we choose sites that are, you know, that there's potential to be able to have gardens, um, preferably not so um, directly adjacent to resource areas. So I think we're, we try to be more careful about those that we offer. And again, that's not, it's certainly not me personally having my eye. I think, again, this is, this is a department. We work as a department. So um, I think that's something that, that, that we've developed and really that's more in Dave's bailiwick than mine. So Dave, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, but Bruce has his hand up. Minor fine grain questions. Let's continue. Um, would Stephanie, would you elaborate on where you see a community garden at Hickory Ridge? Um, we didn't it, I exactly identify a, a specific spot. You know, we've we've been looking. We have some potential areas that look like they're more upland. We're trying to find accessibility to. There's a, a very large set of complexes, as you well are aware. I'm sure behind Hickory Ridge. So, um, you know, it's all a matter of being able to have access, whether access is allowed across properties. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of unknowns and things that we have to look into. So I would say it's it's gotta be identified through what what is an upland resource area that would be available and what is its proximity to the complexes. And again, Dave has been doing more of the work on Hickory Ridge, so I would defer to him. Dave. Uh, thanks, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry, I was a few minutes late, had a budget meeting go over time. Um, yeah, so um, on in terms of Hickory, um, we've identified, you know, a, a couple of places. There's actually not as much room as you'd think out there, given resource areas, given solar and all the other layers of, of uh, lands for that property. So definitely north of the river um, and as close to Mill Valley and the brook and the other uh, apartment complexes to the north as possible. Um, there's... Once you once you apply those layers, um, estimated and priority habitat, floodplain, wetlands, vernal pools, et cetera, there's there's not that many dry upland areas. So um, to the north, closest to Mill Valley, walkable, bikeable from the apartment complexes there. But there's a lot of um, just a lot of complexity. You know, if you put them there, do, does Mill Valley really want people from the other apartment complexes even coming through their property? So. Uh, we're having conversations with those apartment complexes now about these things. So thanks. So, Dave, it's my understanding, which comes from Chris Bascom, I think, that that conversation with the complex on where access would be, and it would be a gated access. But it's my understanding that 
Um, the issue of the flow of traffic through their property is uh, not yet settled. So if we, uh, you gotta, you gotta solve the fire truck access to the solar project and maybe the community garden will come after that. But um, so it sounds like the possibility of a community garden at Hickory Ridge is a good idea, which hasn't found legs yet. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot going at Hickory. The bottom line is in time, the gardens, I, I have no doubt we can find a space, we can deal with the access issues. Yeah, it's just, it's not on the top of the priority list right now, but it will, it will come in time. Bruce? Yeah, so um, one is a policy concern, I guess I have, that if you say that it's a donation and not a fee, that that's an, indicates that people don't have to pay it. They can just go to the garden when they and pay a dollar or pay nothing because it's a donation. So that would be a, a minor concern. I mean, that's your call. You know the people and the site and all that. The other one is something when I went to Fort River with Alex, he pointed out the water uh, access for piped water and how it's all in one corner. And then it's a very long ways over to some of the, the plots that are pretty far away and just whether the town could do to help the gardeners by getting more piped water access. Those are the thoughts I had. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Sure. So I can um, speak to that a little bit. So as far as the Sandpoint system that's there, which is the well, um, that uh, is located there because that's where we had access to the water table. That's where we were able to bring up the water. So um, it's it's a kind of funny site, you know, even right adjacent to it, because um, they tried to put in a second well, uh, and they had sort of mild success. Um, so the, the location of the water table and where we can access the water table is one of the defining factors of where the well went. So, and we understand and we certainly recognize that that is uh, a challenge. I will also say that putting in piping and all of that is not inexpensive. <laughs> and, it, you know, so where's the funding going to come from? So again, you know, I mean, I think these are things that we always have to think about when we're doing all of this work. Um, we have a limited budget for community gardens, but it's not a lot. And when you start talking about piping water, um, because, you know, there's potentially access to a fire hydrant, but it's all the way towards the street and we'd have to go down the driveway and it's a lot. I mean, we've, we've, and we're examining alternatives, maybe some kind of a cistern holding system for, uh, for water out at that point at that garden, in addition to the well. So it might be like a backup, but these are, com and these are the kinds of conversations that we are having within the garden circle, the garden group, and they may make a decision of what they'd like to see, but in terms of the actual implementation of what's allowed and what we can do is partly on the town. I agree. But again, so it's a pretty fine grained question and it's not really relevant to our, to our policy document. Correct. Well, um, I want to go back to the rules for a minute and I appreciate uh, the comments. Um, you have, there were no rules on the website when I, sent the uh, the draft which basically uh, no no substantive changes were made in the rules that you had posted previously we just reorganized them as though somebody a future gardener was looking at them and now you posted rules on the web and while that was all going on you posted rules on the web and i would suggest uh, that rather than trying to they're very i mean they're almost the same and I would suggest that the CONCOM, this committee, adopt what you now have on the web as our own um, <clears throat> and take a look um, at, at what you have up there. And um, um, rather than trying to shuffle the deck, <clears throat> um, yours is, says essentially the same thing. It's arranged a little differently, but uh, it's where you are now and it would terribly, it would be confusing at this point 
to come up with another draft document and repost it on the web. So I would suggest, as I said, that we consider um, this, this subcommittee consider adopting what are up on the web now, and it may take us until our next meeting to take a look at those rules and talk about it. Uh, so any comments on that idea? Karen? Yeah, so we talked about this in our collective meeting was that the, the rules that you drafted, Alex, everybody felt pretty comfortable that those would be sort of the overarching rules and regulations for the um, community gardens. The rules that are posted right now, those are specific to Amethyst Brook. And we did look through those page by page and they are exactly the same as the ones you've drafted. The only distinction is they they are specific to Amethyst and the donation issue. And just to circle back to that for one second, Bruce brought this up. Um, and the reason that they made it a donation was because some people weren't able to pay it. And so um, they wanted to make it sort of like less of a requirement and more of an option. If people can afford to do it, they can do it. If they can't, then it's you know not required for them to have a plot. Um, okay. So like sort of my thinking was if the commission approved the overarching rules and regulations, they're already um, pretty much exactly what is posted for Amethyst. And then the, you know, we reviewed it also in, with, in relation to the um, Fort River um, community gardens. And again, they don't, um, there's no, nothing conflicting about them that they're just the Fort River collaborative group is a little more granular in terms of, you know, the the issues that Stephanie was was mentioning, you know, their days that they do cleanups and, um, you know, the things that they allow relative to like, you know, Thank certain you, species Sarah. of mushrooms and stuff like that. Thank you. Um, I want to just come back to the fee real quick before I get to Stephanie. Um, that may be a policy issue for the uh, for the commission, on uh, because it is possible to have a fee with a sliding scale, and um, I know Northampton has a twenty five dollar fee with the idea that costs get reimbursed by the users. So the town just put up a deer fence for thousands of dollars, and um, there is a Northampton has a sliding scale where people who are um, um, financially not uh, able to come up with $25 uh, don't even have to make a donation. And the feedback I get is people are very honest about that, but they're able to so raise enough money to pay for a shed, for example, which is gonna get built. So I think I wanna talk to this committee about what policy, issues beyond the rules um, we want to consider in our role um, uh, uh, on CONCOM land. So I appreciate the donation, but I think there's an alternative that we might want to talk about. Stephanie? So I just wanted to get back to the posted regulations because as Aaron said, those are specifically for Amethyst Brook, although they are, uh, we did review them and we do agree that even the Fort River Farm rules and regs actually fall under the rubric of those. And I think that's what I said earlier, but there will be a separate uh, set of rules that will be posted for Fort River Farm Community Garden. Once they have that developed, they they're not going to change a lot. I think they're just going to update a few things, pretty minor. But once that gets finished, they're going to, that will be posted on the town website. I didn't actually post Amethyst Brook, all of that. Amethyst Brook is, um, Angela Mills is overseeing that particular garden space. I'm only working with the Fort River Farm Community Garden Group. And again, because they operate differently, the regulations, I just want you to be aware that they'll look different. But essentially, they're the same. They're just arranged a little different, and they might have some details that aren't covered in Amethyst Brook because they're very specific to Fort River Farm. So I just wanted, just in case you go back to the site and you see this, I don't want you to be alarmed. They're pretty much the same. They're just organized differently. And probably it's going to look more like what you originally saw um, that you redrafted your uh, document from. 
Yeah, so that's thank you for that. And Angela, um, Angela's I know well known in the garden community as somebody to contact. And maybe there's people that go in on Friday just so they can get a chocolate chip cookie. Um, oh, no. <laughs> any other um, any other things that we want to cover here? I have perhaps a couple, but uh, yeah, let's see. Erin's got her hand up. I just wanted to say um, Angela's been handling the, the payments for the plots um, for the historic registration fees, and it's been problematic for her. Um, to, for example, if people don't pay, chasing them down, following up with them, it's, you know, she's got a lot of other duties besides this. And so when we consider registration fees versus donation, just ask that you consider that we don't have like a staff person dedicated to this to, you know, chase people down if they don't pay, et cetera. Um, so that's been a challenge for staff. Pretty easy to withdraw their, their permission to have a garden plot. Dave? Yeah, I would just echo what Aaron says. We gotta we gotta keep these things simple. Um, you know, the simpler the better. Sliding scale certainly may be possible. Got a sliding scale with um with um what, what uh, with with trust, right? With with but not we don't have time to verify. We're not gonna be verifying incomes, we're not gonna be verifying eligibility, we just don't have any time for that. I also, Alex, you mentioned something about uh, in you know uh, 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 income and and kind of expenses. Um, keep in mind, um, you know, there's different there's different models in Northampton, including ones that uh, that have Grow Food Northampton in the mix. Um, this is um, any revenue that we see from the gardens goes into the general fund. The department will never see that. Uh, the the mo the 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 trivial amount of money that is collected for gardens will make absolutely no difference in our budget discussions. So it it's it's a it just goes into the big black hole, if you will, of of, of the general fund. So 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 tr translating what comes in for community gardens into covering any expenses for a shed or staff time it it's immaterial really but I do think we need to just keep it as simple as possible. Also, Stephanie, moving forward, I missed the beginning of her presentation um, or discussion of, of gardens. I'm sure it was fine, but you know, she has so many town-wide projects she is working on. I said to Alex the other day when I spoke to him briefly, I mean, this is a very small fraction of Stephanie's time, and it really – in all likelihood will not grow over time with more gardens. So we just need to, you know, um, stay, stay cognizant of the fact that um, gardens are great, but we have to think practically about how much staff time we can spend on them. So anyway. Well, if we don't have the staff time, maybe we shouldn't have them. Um, yeah. We just need to think about the models and, and, and all right. of that. Yeah. Yep. So um, Stephanie. I just wanted to say something about the, the models. So the reason why we're doing things the way that we are at Port River Farm is to create a model where it is community led so that it doesn't require a lot of staff time. And it is requiring a lot of time maybe upfront because we're establishing this, but I, the more and more um, this group follows a, a sort of protocol that was designed by Healthy Hampshire. So their meetings are very, there's a very specific sociocratic method for their meetings, which means everybody has a chance to speak. They have a very uh, distinct formula of how they do their agenda. Once they're more fully entrenched in that system, there will be less of my time that will be needed. In fact, I've already pulled back significantly. The very I will tell you the very first season that I was out there on weekends and during the workday helping them like put down paths and put down plastic and establish the beds. Um, so I was very, very engaged just that first season, but I've done less and less each season. So I think the idea is that we want to create a model where, you know, eventually we could have people uh, run the gardens and that maybe this group of people at Fort River Farm could help to instruct future gardens of people and help other people organize to do a similar effort. So there might be some staff time involved, but it will never be, I think, at the level that we had with Fort River Farm. 
I just wanted to assure you of that. Okay. So um, we're, we're working on a general agriculture policy. Bruce has been very good at putting that together. And one of the stipulations in the policy is that any license that's issued is to an Amherst resident. The gardens involve organizations were not, which are not in Amherst. They're outside of Amherst. And so that sort of goes contrary to the agricultural policy that we're writing. And the CONCOM, I'm not sure the CONCOM wants to give up its role as a custodian for the property. We've never met with these people. We don't get reports on CONCOM, on community gardens. Dave doesn't include it in his updates during the CONCOM meetings. So it's, it's uh, out of sight, out of mind uh, in terms of the commission. And now we're starting again to interact with you, but this is the first time I've ever met you and I'm happy to do that. Um, but there is a, there is a different slice of the pie for in the models for community gardens than we're talking about for agriculture generally. And there may not be a problem with that. We'll just have to reckon with it. Bruce. Dave was first. Dave. Um, yeah, and I think I, I mentioned this the other day, and maybe it's not the right kind of analogy, but I think to some degree we're coming in, you know, uh, with this this policy work, which which is fantastic. It's hard work. We've all rolled up our sleeves, but we're, you know, we have to accept the fact that there are historic relationships that already exist out there on conservation land. And we are having to consider those in the context of the policy work we're doing. So um, I said the other day, it's kind of like tinkering with the plane while you're flying it. The plane has been flying. I mean, Amherst Conservation Land has been in existence since 1960 something. So there are relationships, there are friends groups, there through the years, there's been licenses, leases, community gardens of different kinds and different different uh, uh, flavors, if you will. And right now we have two that we're, we, luckily the slate is pretty clean, actually. I mean, there's not a lot of these relationships and I've been, some might say, some farmers and people who have wanted to get on conservation land, I'm sure would say, man, Dave is too tight of a gatekeeper. He, and one of the reasons I haven't encouraged more of these relationships is the complexity that comes with them. But the one relationship, we, we have these two different models. It's almost like having, in my mind, licenses. If we if we had different licenses out there for different plots of land, they might have different flavors because one was over here in North Amherst and one was over here in South Amherst. One had a well, one didn't. One used irrigation, one didn't. As Stephanie said, the model we have at Fort River is the model that we have and the model we have at Amethyst Brook is a little bit different. It's it uh, doesn't have as much structure to it, if you will. Thank um, you. I, uh, well, I'm not done yet, Alex, but thank you. Um, I want to mention you said something about non Amherst based or something at Fort River Farm. Nothing could be more from the truth. All of the gardeners who garden at Fort River Farm are from Amherst. Stephanie has a partnership with the Hampshire Collaborative, which is encouraging community gardens in in communities all over the valley. So um, we are still, you know, the, we haven't lost any control over the conservation land at Amherst. We've just brought more resources to the table through the Hampshire uh, Collaborative. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, Bruce, I'm just keeping uh, so, an eye on the time, Dave. Yeah. So very quickly, um, I think we're still in the agricultural policy. We're still a little bit uncertain as to whether it's Amherst residents only or strong preference for Amherst residents. So that's still a, de a debating question. We'll come back to that in our further discussions. But I do wonder about are there are there community gardens on Amherst property that's not conservation land? And therefore, that would be a, an additional wrinkle could there be? Um, I'll jump in there. 
to my knowledge, there's no other con there's no other community gardens on Amherst town of Amherst. That's what I meant. Land. There are community gardens at apartment complexes right. throughout town. I was just imagining the possibility that if you'd have a community garden on town land that wasn't conservation land. We've been approached at places like Groff Park and we've kind of said no. Okay. So um appreciate Dave the past relationships. I I don't think the um the commission still has its responsibility for cust cust to be a custodian and it has every opportunity to review those relationships and <clears throat> and say what it wants to about them um i don't know of any i don't i was going to ask where is the documentation uh, between the commission and the gardens it goes back years i'm sure maybe there isn't any record um and i um, um i don't even know if aaron could locate it maybe stephanie could but there's, I know there's a long history, and uh, unfortunately, um, every new generation sets its own baseline. <laughs> it's just a, a standard way of doing things. So as we as we think about these relationships, and they start to take possession of the property as though it's their own, I don't think the commission wants to relinquish its responsibilities. Yeah, I don't think anybody would disagree with you, Alex, and. What I'm pushing back on is, is framing these relationships in what I would characterize as a negative or detrimental way. The, the, we, we should be celebrating the Fort River Farm. We should be celebrating the Fort River Farm Gardens. We should be celebrating the relationship that Stephanie has forged with all those gardeners and with Healthy Hampshire. And we should be cultivating... Um, that group and that relationship to fit in with the policy that you are drafting for the future. That's I all think, I'm saying. I think all I was trying to do is point out that the the the, the policy that Bruce has been drafting does speak to whether or not somebody is an Amherst resident. We have talked about it in this model for Amethyst Brook and or for Fort River anyways differs a little bit from that. And all I want to do is blend them, but be conscious of the fact that there is a um, a difference and we'll have to figure out how to deal with it. This, 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 I never thought the community gardens would um, take so long, frankly. I thought it was fairly easy but nothing's easy. <laughs> Sometimes I want to make it as easy as possible. Bruce. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. So I have 1242 and I wanted to save time at the end to talk about our field trips and next subject for our meetings. We can go a bit longer, but I just want to make sure that uh, we have a hard stop to take care of our business before we depart on promptly at one o'clock. Uh, I don't know who went up first, Stephanie. I was just gonna say, if you're moving on from community gardens, I may uh, leave if that's okay. I don't think you have anything else um, relevant for, for my presence here. So um, I would leave it to Dave and Aaron, um, but I just wanna make sure you don't have any other questions before I go. Would you hold on and we'll see what Bruce has to say? Sure. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Thank um, you so much. And thank for, you all for all the work you're doing. For Ever Garden is great. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Thank all. you very much, Stephanie. Appreciate the time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. So before we leave community gardens, I'd like to settle on what we do with regard to the rules, I, I, the simplest thing for me is to just adopt what they've posted for Amethyst Brook, I mean, for uh, Four River Farm. And when S Stephanie said they will write up something for Amethyst Brook, I'm not quite sure that who the they is, but um, 
uh, it's what she didn't say is when I write up the rules for Amethyst Brook, there's a they out there. And I thought she was referring to Angela or somebody else. I didn't, Dave, can you clarify that? We, we can ask her about that. Um, Stephanie sits 10 feet away from me, but I think, I think what she was referring to is the garden circle um, annually revisits their, their operating, you know, principles and rules and regulations for that space within the, within the fence. And I think that's what she was referring to. Do Did others hear the same thing? No, she, she said, keep in mind the rules that are posted are only for Port River Farm. We will be posting rules for Amethyst Brook when they write them. Aaron, you got clarification? Not, yeah. Yes. So, so the Alex, I think there's the the draft that you've put together with a few very minor changes is 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 what I would be in favor of the commission adopting and incorporating mm -hmm. into the land use policy or the you know yeah our land use policy. The stuff that um, Angela posted for Amethyst Brook is a mirror image. It's just in a different order. So I think with time, once we adopt it she'll just take it out of our policy and use it for amethyst as we've noted the the policy at fort river farm is different but their policies fall within the requirements that the commission sets so they're not going to set policies for example they're not going to say oh you can plant invasive species in your plot they're not going to do anything that deviates from our our umbrella policy but they may have specific policies within the garden footprint which are more restrictive than what um okay our Thank policy you. states. Thank you. Bruce? I think this is analogous to um, when we get to the point in a conservation meeting and it's time to do the order of conditions and there's some minor things and we say, Aaron, go take care of those minor things. And so I think we should just do what Alex suggested. Seems like it's easy, of course. Michelle, how do you feel? I saw a thumbs sounds, up. That sounds here. great to me. I'm comfortable with that plan. Okay. okay. So um, um, you can either take a look at what's on the website for yourself. I can copy it and send it to you. Um, but either way, I think it would be a good thing for you to see what they have posted. And it, it, it should be easy to find. At one time, I had to call Angela and give me, give me a link to get there. I couldn't find it. Um, so it's now 1247. Could we talk? Um, I'm sure there's other community garden things to talk about, but could we now switch over to our field trips and get an update on that? We've got dates. We got save the date and a number of for a number of dates in my calendar. And uh, Aaron, I'm sort of expecting Aaron to tell us where we're going. Some at some point, maybe not now. Go ahead. Yeah. So. Um... The Friday site visit that was scheduled, we uh, have to cancel because Dave can't make it. Um, so just a note that the um, March 8th site visit, um, Dave wants to cancel, but we're still on for the 14th of March and the 21st of March. Um, my thought for the 14th would be to visit um, Amethyst and Fort River Farm um, so that we can do a walk and talk in those locations and look at the look at the areas. Um, so and then Hold on. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting the 14th for one of the community gardens and the 21st for the for the other? Well, so, I mean, this I wasn't thinking about this being directly related to community gardens. It was more so looking at them site wide, but we can certainly see view the community gardens when we're there just in terms of our agricultural policy um, and land use in general, of course. So when um, we go when we go to. Um... Uh, Four River Farm, there's more to that area than than the community garden, as you know. There's the Walnut Grove, and there's a whole bunch of land in back of that. So we would be looking at the whole site, but I did ask if Stephanie might be able to join us when we actually go to look at one of the community gardens, and she didn't seem to object to that. Yeah, it sounds like if we want to look at all of Fort River Farm conservation area, we should probably that would probably be one hour yeah to do that yeah and what time is that on the 14th Aaron 
12 to 1. 12 to 1. Okay. So we'll reserve the 14th for Fort River Farm, I guess, and then the um, 21st for Amethyst Brook. And could Stephanie join us on that one too? I don't, I would not have Stephanie join us at Amethyst Brook. I see no reason for her to join us at Amethyst Brook. She's had virtually no involvement there. So. But for Fort River Farm, if she can make it on the on the Fort. So does does Angela do uh, Fort River? I mean uh, Amethyst Brook. She does, and I may invite her along to join us on that one. That would be super. Be nice to have the staff person there who actually handles it. Um. Is that 12 to 1 as well on the 21st? That's uh, 8.30 to 9.30 on the 21st. Okay, gotcha. There's your placeholder, gotcha. Bruce, I think your hand was up first. If it wasn't, I'm sorry. Quickly, um, at the last meeting, we I raised the question as to whether these meetings can be an hour and a half to get more done. And the idea was we need to wait for Dave to decide whether we can do that. Yeah, yeah, I would. I an hour is really tight. I think. Yeah, I'm. It's tough to move things along. Sometimes things get repeated two and three times. I think we could have good ears and just pick up on things the first time they're said. Um, Michelle, um, an hour and a half would be challenging for me, but um, I don't have to go. Okay. Through, but um, just in regards to doing the site visits to community gardens, like I felt like we were moving in on some kind of decision and consensus with the rules and stuff. So what would be our objectives specifically for viewing the community gardens, just to be mindful of the other issues to look at on a site versus, you know, we could talk a lot about the community gardens. So like what is a pending, pending objective um, for those in the site visit? I think one objective is to physically see it. It helps to talk about it, to see it, see the lay of the land. There's some administrative issues at Amethyst Brook, which I talked to Dave about. Um, there's a, a PVC pipe that comes from another building that spills water onto the gravel parking lot. The parking lot is sloped so that everything drains into the garden. The fence doesn't hit the ground. But what you really need to see is, is just the the, the spick and span layout of of Fort River Farm. It's 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 it looks great. And it you know, really... I actually had a plot there last year. Oh so, okay. okay. <laughs> um and I'm familiar with both sites. So I, yeah, I guess I just want to yeah, I'm seeing Dave. <laughs> I I would say, you know, if we have an hour, I would say 15 minutes on the gardens and then we walk and talk looking at the context of the conservation area we're in. I will That's get, what I was gonna say. I will get you um the the background materials on Fort River Farm. Stephanie, I know gave you a background on the acquisition of Fort River Farm. That was specifically purchased for what we're talking about, agricultural use. So we need to look at the whole property. Um, you know, on the site visit. And then we can also talk about amethyst and talk about policy related to drawing water from the for, uh, amethyst brook. Um, do we allow larger plots at amethyst brook or are we just going to keep it more of a community garden? So that's what I, I would do like 15 minutes on the gardens and the remainder on the context and what else might happen there. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely want to spend time on the agricultural question at both of those two. Yes. I was also thinking of inviting the guy that you bought it from to talk to us about the walnut grove because he has one over by Silvio Conti that he runs. I, uh, so yeah, I, I guess yeah, I I think in an hour, Alex. You know, um, I just think the walnut grove we can talk about in the in the hour long visit, but you know we can get Bob Saul to talk with with us about black walnuts. You know, I, I just, I think that's such a a small part of what we're talking about right now in terms of policy. Um, 
I can tell I, you. I that. definitely want to get down to the end of the road, past yeah. those two sections, because there's so much more, and I never got there. And yeah, we have a whole loop trail there that we we should talk about, and and whether we're going to allow more or encourage more agriculture to happen there. Um, I can tell you what our rough plan is for the black walnuts. I'm in touch with Bob Saul, who's the black walnut experts in the in the region, but I don't want to take. Bob is uh, a very knowledgeable, but also very, um, yeah, he will take the entire hour to talk to us about black walnuts. Loquacious is the, is the term, I think. Erin? Um, I don't wanna uh, hijack your discussion. So it, I just have something I need to tell you guys. Uh, I can't make the next meeting, um, which is on the 19th due to uh, my children's scheduled physicals, um, annual physicals. So the 19th, I can't um, attend the regularly scheduled meeting. So who will, who will start the Zoom? I think Michelle and I will fight for it, right, Michelle? <laughs> sure, I mean. Um, We're gonna arm wrestle. <laughs> I, I guess. Am I, I think you might have to, I don't know, Dave, like, is oh, I can, I can start the Zoom. Today? That's not a problem. I mean, okay. your meetings are not that, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm more, I'm more concerned that we prep you as, you know, even more than you normally do with Erin, just because she's not going to be able to be there. Wait, are, are we talking oh, about the land use subcommittee? Land meeting? Use. Okay. Oh, you're talking about land use. Okay. The land use meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's no problem. We can do that. That's easier. I thought you were talking about, I was just jumping from calendar to calendar here. You're not talking about the next CONCOM meeting. No. On the 13th. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, we can we can do this meeting, no problem. Okay, so Dave's going to start on the 19th, or next, the, the next meeting of this subcommittee. And... Um, um so in the four minutes remaining um we need to talk about what it is we're going to talk about on the 19th well my hope would be that i would have moved to draft eight of the eight or nine sorry it's this the one you have is eight um there are several research projects that are noted in the notes on the right hand side of the document dave has one of them i have the rest and Dave, yours, yours is um, exploring issues with the town attorney by, about this preference or restriction of Amherst residents. Um, and the rest of them are either discussions or things where I need to come up with more information to inform the discussion or to draft something. So I'll keep working on it. I had some comments. Um, should I just save them for the meeting or yes, I can move forward ahead of you know based on what you what you tell me yeah okay I mean I'll just I just We've got three minutes spit it out okay um let's see um well I the first one was the town the Amherst preference one so um I would advocate that whether or not we have a Amherst uh, resident have a license, that there'd be some like community connection. And I talked about this before, and I've talked to some small farmers about potential ways that could happen. And they also referred to that Northampton program, but like even just any way to get the food to the community so that like, I know that sometimes farms like um, have like give their vegetables to like Greenfield or like somewhere outside of the community. So I just want to have like some connection, whether it be a CSA or like even a farm stand or a donation to survival center, or the schools, or like, you know, after they harvest and the leftover stuff is there that that could be picked, but okay. something like that. Um, I'll, work, I'll work on that. And then, oh, just a comment on the signs and then Oh, we mentioned something about requiring the cover crops. I don't, I'm not a farmer, but is there like a, a short list of um, ones that we want, like winter rye or something like that? Um, some that are, you know, I, I don't know, some control over that that's just like laid out very clearly so they can pick from it. Um, I think there was a 
error in the river um, mean annual flow number. We I think we changed it from 30 to 10, but the 30% is still there. So it says 10 and then has 30 in parentheses, which uh, I'll have to find it, but I'll, I will find it. Okay. It's let's on come, page four. Let's, the let's come back to that. You're talking about the minimum flow in the stream. Yeah. We order. discussed it, but something is off in the sentence. It's no, it says like, below 10% and then the 30 is still there. Yeah. But you I want 30. Yeah, I think it was being changed from 10 to 30. Okay. So, Correct. Then the 10 just so let's, to we need to end there, Michelle, in order to keep within your time. Okay. okay. Well, I only have two more things. So is it okay if I just. Send me as an email and I'll deal with it. So totally up to you. Please do it now. I'll just do it now. Okay. Um, and the last page, the use of fertilizers and pesticides. So it says agricultural producers shall indicate the management plan, whether pesticides, fertilized herbicides, whatever fall outside the NOSA requirements. And I propose that in the management plan, they just list what they intend to use. And then if there's something that falls outside of NOSA, that's specifically addressed. Okay. Um, and then last one is, um, the last one is maintenance and the licensed farmer is responsible for edge mowing and maintaining farm roads, fencing signs and access. So I could see some miscommunications and things happening here with edge mowing and like what they perceive as edge and what we perceive as a wetland buffer. So it's maybe like site marking or mapping that shows like where our expectation is that they be maintaining so that doesn't become an unfortunate situation. Um, and same with like access, like if they need better access to the side of the farm and they end up mowing through some BVD, that would be unfortunate. So just some way to sort of preventatively manage that. In the management plan. Yeah. So why, and on just site, real quickly, probably. Michelle, why not just say no activity within the buffer zone, period? I mean, sometimes it could be like bird nesting habitat. Sometimes it, it might be more than it just might be that the town is managing this section of the area for something. Why not just and I think this is totally site specific. I just, you know, I think a site visit and sort of understanding like where the edge is, where their access lane is, um, could, you know, prevent I, like some nice pollinator habitat from getting plowed over. Okay. I was just thinking, why not just forbid work inside the buffer zone? Uh we can talk. We can, can go we, back. Can we just? I mean, I think a simple solution to this, Michelle, would be um, we'd have a project area. We'd have a we'd have a yeah. farming area. They can't operate outside this area without additional permission. So we would do a GIS map. We'd we you know we'd carefully do that because farmers farmers most farmers if you say BVW they really don't even know what BVW is. So they might look at it as oh that's just the edge of the field. So I think a project area. This is where you can work. You can't work beyond that without permission. This is your access. You can't create a new access. Yeah, I'll work on. I'll work on the language. For okay, next. and then, but also work sometimes work and like access routes are considered differently. So I just want to make sure that everything. All right, I'll give you some language to work to chew on. Okay, that's all I got. Thanks for listening, Dave. When you talk to them about using acronyms, um, our acronym is pretty close to BVD. You might get a chuckle. <laughs> BVD. <laughs> all right i think we're over time all right thanks everyone thank you all thank you okay we'll and you thanks soon. for having stephanie dave that was very good sure i'm, I'm glad it was helpful bye bye all. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.